In this episode of Getting Geeky with Game Relief, I sit down with Trevor from Blue Heron Entertainment to talk all about his latest expansion, Affectionate Cats and Cuddles, It's Treat Time, that is launching the Kickstarter. Well, it'll be launched by the time you hear this, but it's launching the 28th, so Sunday the 28th of October, and it will run through the end of November. So hang on until after Kickstarter Corner, which we're bringing you six great games that are currently on Kickstarter and one you can get on Amazon for your Halloween gaming. This episode of Getting Geeky with Game Relief is proudly being powered by The Language of Magic which is a deck-building card game for one to four players inspired by the works of none other than Richard Garriott. It's live on Kickstarter currently. They're getting close to their goal, and there's still a week left to back this as it ends on Sunday, the 4th of November. So you'll definitely want to check this great deck building out, especially if you like deck building in general. I know I do. I especially love the box, how it looks. The, unfortunately, the picture on the page doesn't do it justice, so I would go in and watch the video on the Kickstarter page. But anyways, check out The Language of Magic on Kickstarter through the 4th of November. This episode of Getting Geeky with Game Relief is also proudly being powered by Table Breakers, Super Heavy Solid Metal Poly Dice Set. They're dangerously hefty. The classic metal poly dice set with a touch of luxury. Bigger, heavier, and my favorite, dangerous. Plus, you'll get Christmas delivery on these bad boys. So definitely check out the campaign as it's running for nine more days, ending on Tuesday, the 6th of November. Definitely check out Table Breaker's Super Heavy Solid Metal Poly Dice Set. This episode of Getting Geeky with Game Relief is proudly being powered by Crypto Cartel. It's a tabletop card game where opponents compete to earn the most cryptocurrency on the black market. I would definitely go in and watch Andy's video that he created for his Kickstarter, if nothing else. It's an awesome job he does on this. Plus, the card game Crypto Cartel looks awesome as well. Logan Chops did a preview on it, as well as Board Game Spotlight. So definitely go check these out. And if you like what you see on any of these great games that we talk about here on Getting Geeky with Game Relief, make sure you back them, even if it's just for a dollar, or share them around. But you have until the 12th of November to back Crypto Cartel, currently on Kickstarter. This episode of Getting Geeky with Game Relief is also proudly being powered by Fossil Find, which is a domino-based board game that uses custom double 12 dominoes as game pieces. Hopefully this next week, we'll be getting you a preview of this great game. So definitely check out this awesome roll and move domino based board game that's on Kickstarter through Sunday the 18th of November. Definitely check out Fossil Find, a domino based board game. Getting Geeky with Gamer Leaf, the podcast in which one man strives to level up his geekhood and helping you do the same one battle at a time. Now, let's get geeky with Gamer Leaf. Welcome to Getting Geeky with Game Relief. I hope you'll take your coat off and stay a while. Here's a chair. You can sit here or on our recliner or on our couch. Make yourself comfortable. And I gotta let the cat out just so he's comfortable. He's gotta take care of some business here shortly. But in the meantime, I hope you'll go ahead and enjoy these drinks. I've made a drink especially for you and your friends. The flavor is up to you completely. Just let us know what you like and we'll make sure we get that. We've got the shrimps on the barbie. I think that's what they say. Or we've got, 
your favorite kind of dessert as well. We'll give those to you, however, before we jump into the main event or the interview. But first, let's go ahead and jump over to Kickstarter Corner where we're bringing you some great games. Enjoy your drink while you're waiting. And then when I let the cat back in, both you and your cat that I let out gracefully because I didn't want your cat doing his business in my house. But after we get that, we'll go ahead and jump into this great interview, which we talked to Trevor all about his great game about cats and cuddles that's on the Kickstarter currently. So let's go ahead and get into it, shall we? What is this place? What is it doing here in the Leaves computer? Oh, it's Kickstarter Corner with the Leaves. The first game on Kickstarter, you're not going to want to dilly-dally on this one, as there will be less than 48 hours. At the time of recording, there's 60 hours to go, but you don't. it won't go live for a little while. Cosmic Mirror Core Rulebook. It's a fantasy, sci-fi, modern fantasy. The Cosmic Mirror Core Rulebook is the core rules needed to play in future Cosmic Mirror game settings, sci-fi, fantasy, and modern fantasy. I hope they reach their goal. If you haven't backed it, make sure you go check it out, especially if your role-playing games are getting dull. They're about getting close to 50% of their goal, and this project ends... Tomorrow, Tuesday, the 30th of October, mid-morning. So definitely check out Cosmic Mirror Core Rulebook Fantasy Sci-Fi Modern Fantasy on Kickstarter. Next, this one has a little more time, but still ending really soon. Privateer Press has Level 7 Protocol Board Game, the second edition. It's a tactical minis board game for a 2-6 player where high-tech commandos hunt an alien menace through a secret government facility. I would definitely go in and watch their Kickstarter video. It actually seems like it be, could be an awesome movie. Level 7, the movie. This is the second edition, like I said, back in 2013 was when the first edition came out. And you know what? It was one of Tom Vassell's top 10 games at this time. You have, through this Wednesday, the 31st of October, to back this great game. So definitely check out Level 7 Omega Protocol Board Game, the second edition. Mighty Boards has brought us an expansion to one of their great games, Petra Chore, Honeybee Expansion and Reprint. It's a sweet buzzing expansion to Petra Chore and a reprint of the base game. Expansion funded in 8 hours and you still have a few more days to go ahead and back this great project which ends this Friday the 2nd of November. So definitely check out Petra Chore Honeybee Expansion and reprint on Kickstarter for a little while longer. You might be ready for this Halloween but what about next Halloween? I figured as much, so let's help you get ready by expanding your horde of Halloween games for next year. Rabble Game Studios will help us with that as Dead Sprint the Game. It's a board game for 2-5 to five players that need to outrun a horde of the undead. Try to stay ahead on your turn before the horde takes theirs. Looks like a fun and awesome game. There's about 18 days to go. This project will go through... Thursday, the 15th of November. So a little over two weeks, so definitely check out Dead Sprint the Game on Kickstarter currently. Another great game on Kickstarter, not necessarily Halloween-like, but setting up your electrical system in your home before you have a housewarming party. That's right, Circuit Breaker Board Game. It's a puzzle of quirky competition and crafty rodents coming to you from Freshwater Game Company. This project, or this game I should say, is a strategy game for up to four players. That, which you're successfully trying to rewire your house before the house party. It's got some great awesome mechanics. I would scroll through the page, see if it's something you like. You can download the print and play, check it out on Tabletopia as well to see if it's something you like. This project will be on Kickstarter through Thursday, the 15th of November. 
definitely check out Circuit Breaker Board Game. Last but not least, in Kickstarter realm games at least, is Motora. Coming to you from Callum, it's a race against time for two to six players in which you gather sacred idols scattered across the island and save your tribe before it's too late. In Motora, you are using worker placement, resource management, and dice combat, as well as capture the flag objectives. This game is going to be on Kickstarter through the 17th of November, so definitely check out Motora. It will be a great game to add to your collection. Now, like we said, you may be ready for this Halloween, but why not increase your horde of Halloween games by one before this Wednesday, is it? Wednesday or Thursday, whenever Halloween is coming to us. Go ahead and check out our Family Fun Day Friday episode 36 in which we previewed or reviewed Zoms, a half-brained zombie card game that you can find over at zomsgame.com. And if you're a member of Amazon Prime, get some free shipping on this game. But you don't want to dilly-dally as Halloween is upon us. So definitely check out our episode which we previewed the game as well as our interview as we sat down with Glendon the creator and mastermind behind this great game so go check out Zoms a half brain card game at zomsgame.com let's let the cat back in make sure he's done his business you need a refill on your drink we can do that and do you want some dessert what kind of dessert do you like? I've got millions and millions of desserts. What can I whet your appetite with? Oh, really? That's my favorite as well. Well, I'm glad we're in the same boat together. Well, here you go. Enjoy this, especially as we jump into this great interview with Trevor to talk all about a game and expansion for you and your cat or to celebrate your cats. Anyways... We'll catch you on the flip side of this interview, okay, people? Now, let's get geeky with Gamer Leaf. Moku was a sweet cat. A stray from Hawaii, he was picked up by a family and simply wanted to be loved. He lived his life incredibly happily, and when he passed away... His owner wanted to share the love he gave to the rest of the world. Did that sound familiar to you guys? It didn't to me neither, but this is a story or the narrative of how affectionate cats and cuddles, it's treat time, came to be or somewhere around there. And we're, tonight we're lucky enough to have on the creator mastermind behind this great game or expansion, if I'm correct, Trevor. Is that correct, Trevor? Is that how you fall in line with affectionate cats and cuddles, it's treat time? Yes, Blake. Uh, thank you for having me on. We're so glad you could come on Getting Geeky with Game Relief. Exactly. And I just wanted to first start off by saying that It's Street Time is an expansion, and the base game, Affectionate Cats and Cuddles, is currently available. So you don't need to need the expansion to have a great time it just adds a little bit extra awesome and before well let's we'll get into that in a minute but is before we get into everything else your backstory and whatnot affectionate cats and cuddles was that on kickstarter as well no i was actually able to procure funding to get that printed without having to go to for crowdfunding backing oh, okay awesome and we'll get into it a little bit later on but before we jump into all that let's rewind a little bit if we could how did you get started into playing tabletop board games Trevor? Ah, so when I, ever since I, I was young, my family and I, we would play games like Five Crowns, Quiddler, eventually moving on to Ticket to Ride and Viticulture, believe it or not. And it was just always a nice time around the table where no matter what was going on, we could sit down, play a game, and enjoy each other's company. It sounds like Ticket to Ride was the one that got you over into the hobby game field, or what was the first game that got you into the, what hobby gaming is today? Well, Settlers of Catan was the first one of those hobby games that I started playing, but I got more and more into Ticket to Ride, and then I decided that I wanted to start making my own games, and in wanting to make my own games, I wanted to play more games, and I started delving more into the hobby game market from there. 
Oh, okay, and um, I know it ebbs and flows, but do you? What would you say your current favorite game is at this time, Trevor? Mm, that's a good question. Uh, so, I would have to say my current favorite game is a game that perfectly has mechanics as metaphor, and that is The Grizzled. Now, it's a cooperative game, and it's bleak at times, but it really shows off the mechanics of the game as the theme and blends it all together perfectly. Yeah, we actually have that on the shelf. Unfortunately, we've yet to get it to the table. I've heard him talk about it on podcast. Is it as hard as people make it out to be? Yes, it absolutely is. And it, it is definitely, or it can be, a demoralizing experience the first time you play. But then again, it was a demoralizing time. Yeah, for sure. Per se, somebody hasn't heard of that. What can you tell us about the Grizzled Trevor? Well, what I can tell you is that it is a, a card game based on World War I, where you are a team of soldiers simply just trying to make it home, complete each mission, make sure that you don't get any uh, too many hard knocks or you don't fail too often so that you can make it out the other side. It's really an experience that you have to play to fully un- to fully appreciate, but it definitely brings that you're in the mud of the trenches feel to the gameplay. And especially when players stop being able to talk because of the hard knocks they've got or other sort of quirks that they may acquire. Like it really feels like you're in the trenches. Is that why it's so hard with some of the mechanics? Mm -hmm. That's exactly why it's hard. And it's relent relentless because even if you decide like, you know, I'm going to take it easy this turn it just means that the game's going to punish you more at the end of that turn. Okay, interesting. So if you were able to do one thing to enhance the Grizzle, what would that be, Trevor? Mm, that is a good question. So I think I would redo how support gets allocated because there's a, a set of mechanics where, in essence, blind blind voting occurs to alleviate this the hard knocks or negative effects on certain players and at times it honestly just feels like you know if you were de- you weren't dealt out the right voting tiles to begin with like there's some people that just aren't going to get help and maybe that's part of the design intent of the game but it feels like either the tiles themselves need to be changed or like how the actual voting occurs need would need to be changed but that's just my small nitpick there. Have you beaten it, or how? What's your um, your standing go at the game, or where where do you stand? So far, I'm currently at a 33 percent win rate with the game. That's better than me. It's at 100 percent, but like I said, I haven't played it yet. <laughs> Fair enough, there. Well, there you go, awesome. And is there any expansion to that? There is an expansion that makes the game a bit easier. And does add a few more mechanics called uh, Watch Out, I believe Watch Out, sir. And I have played that at the table, and it is fun. Though it does, there there are definitely some balancing adjustments that are done to make the game more fair to the players, which I'm not sure works with the theme. But that's that's also a a different, a small difference of opinion in my books. Yeah, we all got them. Everybody's entitled to one. So that's a good thing. And I I think they, I've heard it said numerous times that not one game is, can appease everybody or make everybody happy. Oh no, of course not. I mean, as soon as someone makes a game that everyone loves, I mean, every designer needs to hang up their hat at that point. Yeah. We'll all be done. Yeah. Which is why I'm, why it's something that we strive for, but can never truly obtain. For sure. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be a shame. It would be one game and then everybody be done. That'd, I guess it's slow Kickstarter down, I guess, for sure. Everyone would look at uh, film projects instead or something. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Now, on the completely different spectrum, or so it would seem, to World War One is uh, Affectionate Cats and Cuddles. Maybe let's talk about the uh, base game before we get into its treat time, if you're okay with that. What can you tell us about Affectionate Cats and Cuddles? So the base game, Affectionate Cats and Cuddles, is a game I designed to be sweet, simple, and to really be open to all sorts of players, whether you're a hardcore hobby gamer or somewhat or more family oriented or just a family that needs something other than Monopoly to play at the table, 
this is a game that anyone can pick up and play. I can't guarantee that the hardcore hobby gamers are going to like the dice involved, but it's simple enough. It's a simple roll dice, take action game, and it, it really brings kids and families to the table and provides an opportunity for parents to teach their kids like, well, this is what you need to do to take your turn or this, you know, you have to give one of your cuddles to someone else because you rolled that and that's just the dice and sort of really providing a way for families to introduce people into games as a concept. Okay, awesome. So what are we doing or what's the purpose of affectionate cats and cuddles, Trevor? So as I as was said in the in the little story blurb, uh, I designed the game after a cat I had named Moku, and he was the sweetest thing. And when he passed away, I wanted to make a game that was a, as simple as sweet as he was, and so that other families and other people could experience that same level of cuteness and sweetness that he gave to me in his life. Oh, okay. And then per se, me and you were to sit down to play uh, Affectionate Cats and Cuddles, what would play look like? Or what my, what's my turn going to look like, Trevor? First of all, everyone takes their turn at the same time. So everyone has a pair of cat dice and rolls them all at the same time, going three, two, one, meow, and rolling on meow. Once, once that's happened, everyone sees what combination of dice they've gotten. If they have any silly tokens, which are basically currency used for re-rolls and you can gain through a certain roll of dice, then you can use those silly tokens to re-roll your dice or force someone else to do a re-roll if you want. After all the re-rolls are done, you see what action you have, you take that action, and then you see if there are any cuddle tokens in the middle. If there aren't, whoever has the most wins. Otherwise, you keep going. And what are my dice going to look like? Are they just a regular six-sided dice with numbers, or do they have other things on them? So there are six-sided dice with uh, three different faces on them. Humans, two humans, two hearts, and two paws. And each pair of dice makes up an action. That's, that's sort of the basics of the game, and there's a handy reference sheet for when you're starting to learn how to play. But after a few rounds, you don't need that anymore. You can just roll your dice, look at them, and you know what what sort of action you're taking. And how do I win? Is it based on um, a point, a victory points, or how's, it, how's winning look? So the victory points in Affectionate Cats and Cuddles are called Cuddle Tokens, and they are little heart-shaped tokens that players can gather from the middle or steal from each other. And whoever has the most of these Cuddle Tokens when there are none left in the, in the middle wins okay awesome and can it can it go uh, is it a quick game or it's a very quick game like i've designed the rules and specifically worded them such that if you want to play for longer you can absolutely do so i say that you can play for up to three rounds and keep track of rounds with cat tokens but a single round which can be a game is five minutes so you can really have a a game that takes five minutes or it takes a whole afternoon of just keep resetting and playing if you want. Okay, awesome. And um, before we get into the expansion, you talked about you were able to do the funding for this first one initially yourself. How does that look? I talked to a lot of creators that do the Kickstarter thing straight away. How does it look doing the other route? So it was definitely a different experience because I didn't need to do all – all of the well, there was different sort of prep work that was needed to pitch the idea and to show the example to potential uh, investors that hey, this is something that you could potentially want to go into. Uh, thankfully, I was just showing, I was just playing the game one time, and the the investor saw the game and he and he went, wow, this is amazing. Let me help. I'll help you get this to market. Just make sure I'm informed every step of the way, and that worked out. It was a very uh, rare experience. Okay, and so was it published through somebody else, or they just helped with funding? No, they just helped with funding, thankfully. I have self-published uh, both the games that ha have been published. 
Okay, awesome. And I imagine there's a way to get it on the Kickstarter, but can somebody find this affectionate cats and cuddles in a retail store near them? If you're in the Seattle area, absolutely. It's at mock, at the Mox stores. But if you're not in the Seattle area, you can at, you can find it online at my website, blueherongames.com. You go to the store and you can just click on Affectionate Cats and Cuddles and you'll see it right there. Okay, awesome. And word on the street is you created a uh expansion for it called it's tree time what can you tell us about this expansion trevor so this expansion brings some new mechanics to the base game of affectionate cats and cuddles because the base game as you you've just heard is very simple it's very simplistic it's great for kids but i noticed that as there were siblings with some older children they they weren't quite into it so i wanted to make something that they could also enjoy now I said that there's two ways to play: an advanced version, which you can de- you could play with just all of the regular components of the game, and there's a print-to-play file on my website, which adds the mechanic of dice drafting. Now, the only thing that really changes up with the with the turn is that everyone rolls their dice, chooses a die, and locks it in immediately, and then starting with a certain player who has the cat token that everyone goes in turn order, picking the other die to build their action. Now, that's the advanced game, because then you have your action, you take, you do any re-rolls, you take that action, great. Now the expansion adds worker placement as a mechanic. And the idea was that, so you do the whole dice drafting, and that's great, but what if we want to add a bit more strategy? Worker placement, if it's still in turn order, doesn't make sense because someone just builds the best action, places their little cat pawn on it, and they're like, oh, well, that's great. So the worker placement happens in reverse turn order, meaning that players now have to be more strategic as they build their dice actions on their mat because someone else may be taking that action instead of them. Okay, so if I'm understanding correctly, you do your dice drafting first or whatnot, and then uh, in one order, and then completely different order is the worker placement? In the reverse order, yes. Okay, awesome. And so that gets a little bit more strategy as opposed to the die? Yeah, it adds more strategy to the dice. It adds... It adds more to the it adds more to the game. It's still and what's what I was really aiming for, even with this added complexity, is that the game at its core is still simple. So every player still know has the same goal of getting the most cuddle tokens, but now things are more of a okay. What do I expect people are going to draft, and how are people, and how should I strategically take my moves so that I get the best thing possible from this because I may lose some cuddle tokens back to the middle if I take this action but it denies someone else a different action or it may benefit me potentially there are de- there's so there's a bit more to think about there okay awesome now when it comes to affectionate cats and cuddles it's tree time what would you say you're most proud of Trevor so the thing I'm most proud of is that I well, two things, really, and I know that's that's kind of cheating the question, but one of them is that I was able to incorporate other cats aside from Moku that have been really impactful in my life, both with currently with me and passed on, and sort of add their sort of flavor and cuteness to the game, which is which seems like well, of of course that's it's just art assets. But finding a way to incorporate that idea, which I wanted to do at the very beginning, into a later expansion was great. And the and on the more mechanical level, finding a way to provide stepping stones for people to learn more difficult mechanics in the hobby game market so that children, people unfamiliar with hobby games, or people who just want a lighter experience can all enjoy this sort of game and not really get bored of it. We in creating the expansion. Well, how did you know it was time to get an expansion going? I guess when I was working on the base game, I did a lot of play testing at uh, some more hardcore hobby events like PAX, 
PAX Prime, uh, sorry, PAX West, in which the people visiting the game area were more experienced with games. And they kept telling me like, okay, yeah, I want, but I want more to do. I want more to do. I want more, more to do. I want more uh, strategy involved. And I sort of went, okay, that's not the quite the right, right market. But then I went to another convention, Geek Girl Con, and uh, what I saw was that the younger children and the families were really enjoying it. But as the kids were getting older and playing it, they were saying some of the same things. And at that point, I, I wanted to make a game that kids could grow with, basically. And so that was the point where I wanted to make an expansion and started. Like I, it, I made sure that the base game was separate, but I wanted to start working on those mechanics in the meantime as well. Oh, okay, that makes sense. And in playtesting for the expansion, was there anything that you had to cut because it just wouldn't work for the game? Oh, absolutely. The So the first round of expansion-esque material or advanced material that I came up with involved using the uh, silly tokens, which I mentioned briefly that are used for rerolls more, and providing other ways for people to get silly tokens and that those tokens could be spent for actions and it, it really sort of lost the core of the game, which is you roll dice, you want cuddle tokens, and it's light and easy, and it felt cumbersome. And so I had to put that down, worked on some other ideas, and eventually said, okay, well, in my utility belt of mechanics that I have seen, what is the simplest mechanic I can add on to here? And let's see how that goes. And that's when the dice drafting came, first came up. And I said, okay, that seems to work. That seems to be fun. But I want something a little more because this uses all the same components. I can't justify an expansion with that. In fact, I'll make a print in place so that people can download that for free and play with their base game because why not? It's all the same components. And that's when I said, well, when I started learning viticulture and teaching that to my family, the concept of worker placement was difficult for them to, for my family to pick up because there aren't a lot of mainstream non-hobby games that really tackle that mechanic. And so I said, well, is there a way for me to do this, to take this very simple idea, which has a small layer of complexity on top and add this other layer of complexity such that I can te start to teach these more complex mechanics if, for instance, I have my, my cousins wanting to play with me and they aren't familiar with worker placement. And I say, well, we could just play this game and then we play that and then we could play something more complex. And so finding that I could do this stepping stone approach was what I really wanted to do with the expansion. And... It sort of it sort of pop sprung up from there. So with the expansion, it takes a what would sound like a gateway game and teaches people how to play worker placement. Yes, exactly, and that and that's sort of the idea with with its treat time that anyone can buy and play affectionate. The net is cast as wide as possible, but if you want more in the game, you can opt into that, and that this provides a way for families to teach their children more complex games so that they can start playing those more complex games or it provides a way for more experienced gamers to bring their non-experienced friends into the into the genre it it, it is a gateway but it is a opting in gateway it's not just you either buy the game or you don't it's you buy the game and then you can buy the expansion if you want Okay, that's pretty awesome. So, with all the other great games that are currently on Kickstarter, what makes your game or expansion pop out or stand out as one of my audience should go check out and then back, if, back it if they like what they see, Trevor? Well, there's a few things. The first being, it comes in a bag. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot, but if you are, say, buying a gift for a friend or for a family member since the Christmas season is coming, the base game comes in a bag and the expansion is being made so that it completely fits inside the bag with no 
extra storage to be to worry about because there aren't a lot of people that want to carry a box around with them but a number of people are more than happy to just throw a bag in their purse or in their backpack and be on their merry way so that's the first thing is that it's very easy to store and is unbelievably cute with that now the second thing i would have to say is that we have a special a reward tier that is limited in which we have reserved a number of the base games to be sh that to be shipped off before Christmas so that you will get the game before Christmas at the very least and you can add on the expansion to that reward if you want but at the very least you can buy something for your family members and then you can and then you can add the expansion on, which will come later in February, so that you can get familiar with the game. Okay, but they can get the actual base game before Christmas. Exactly. Well, that sounds pretty cool. Now I'm looking at the Kickstarter before you've actually launched. How much? Do you know approximately how many you're going to have of that uh, pledge level? We're going to have 500, and hopefully we hit we hit the limit, and we have to find a way to print more. Well, there you go. And it looks like at that base level, it's $15 pledge. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. With shipping and then shipping and handling is added on. I know that a lot of people don't like that, but I'd rather have you know at the time that you're pledging that the shipping and handling is being added on than get that surprise charge later. For sure. And do you know what the different um, shipping rates are going to be, like especially the U.S. and then like maybe U.K. and some of the others? So I... I've thought long and hard about this, and I'm currently only working with the U.S. Now, if I get enough people to tell me that they want interna international shipping, I'm more than ha happy to do that. But the but the current shipping that I have for for the U.S. is around two or two or three dollars. Let me just check, make sure I don't put my foot in my mouth right here. Yeah, we don't want to do that. We'll have people choking in the. Uh... You may not be able to deliver those if your foot gets too far down your mouth. Yeah, it's just $3 shipping for anywhere in the U.S. Okay, and um, yeah, so if they do that pledge level, so they the first 500 people that do that and get the base game, would they need to also go in and do another pledge level for the Tree Time Lover, or can they just add an additional $5 to that pledge? They would add an additional $7 to the pledge, and they're all good to go. And, and the thing is, even... Even at that additional seven dollars, you're getting the game for twenty five, twenty five dollars. That includes all of the shipping, shipping and handling. And if you buy the game currently, you're already having to pay three dollars for shipping and handling on top of twenty dollars. So you save a fair bit by getting both the base game and the expansion at the same time. Okay. Yeah. So if you like any, if you like cats, I guess, and if you want to get a game that people can go ahead and break in from the gateway and then add worker placement so you can teach your children or other people that maybe haven't played worker placement games. It's looking like affectionate cats and cuddles. It's treat time is the way to go. And plus you with that, you can start playing the game this year as you'll get Christmas delivery. If you're one of the first 500 people to back this game and it's launching on what this sunday coming up which would be the 28th am i correct 28th of october the 28th of october absolutely awesome was there anything behind because usually i hear monday tuesday wednesday was there a science behind launching on a sunday trevor what can you tell us about this <laughs> well i wish there was i wish there was a, a science to it but i but i wanted to make sure that i'd that I designed the Kickstarter and got everything ready beforehand that there was enough time. Initially, I was I was shooting for the 20th, a nice Friday that people could s start looking towards, but I then, re I then realized that, you know, there wasn't going to be enough time for me to make sure that everything was smoothed out, that everything was calculated to make, to develop, 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 ah, deliver, sorry about that, the best, the best good, the best uh, Kickstarter experience to any backers to my game. So I pushed out the Kickstarter date by eight days, and it just has worked out from there. Oh, okay, awesome. And per se, somebody wants to go ahead and see what other people thought about the game. Are there any reviewers that reviewed your game or and or expansion, and what did they have to say about it, Trevor? So I have to say there are definitely there are some reviews, and they're on the Kickstarter page. I would like to give a small shout out to the misprinted token 
who was unbelievably happy with the game and said it was unbelievably sweet and adorable and they absolutely loved it. Uh, Settlers of the Board provided another review saying that they liked it and that it was sweet. And also, Jason Reviews did a nice... The Jason's board, di- board Game Diagnostics did a very nice review of it as well, and that includes gameplay. So if you want to see what the game plays like in in depth and detail, check out the video on the Kickstarter page. Okay, awesome. And depending on it, I don't know how, hopefully they're going to go really quick, but I don't know if all of the 500 will be gone by the time this launches on Monday morning. But per se, they are all taken, and we're going for stretch goals. What kind of stretch goals are we going for straight off? Uh, so we got we got a couple of stretch goals here. So in terms of just money, we have at three thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars, we will provide stickers for the cat ponds. Now each of the cat ponds is shaped like the cats on the cat mats. But to make the game a little easier, we're going to provide stickers to put onto those ponds so that your gameplay experience can be easier. And these are like cat meeples, if I'm looking at them right, aren't they? Mm-hmm. They are They are absolutely cat meeples, and each one is designed so that you can, ju- you can just set it down. You can line them up to the mat. You have the meeple. You have the mat. Everything is intuitive from that perspective. Uh, uh, Four thousand five hundred dollars. You get improved boards. We're making we would make the boards more durable to make sure that they're made out of better materials. At six thousand dollars, we're going to actually do the painting onto the cat ponds so that you don't need the stickers anymore. And at eight thousand dollars, we're going to take those cat mats, which are currently made out of cardboard, and make them out of neoprene. So like. All of your fancy mouse pads or your game mats so that you can more easily roll them up, put them into your bag, and not have to worry about them getting wet. And at 10000 and more, we're going to have to come up with some more stretch goals. But don't worry. Yeah, awesome. So if you like cats and you want to get that worker placement mechanic uh, taught to other people, definitely go ahead and check out Affectionate Cats and Cuddles. And It's treat time. We'll make sure we leave all the links in the show notes so they can just click on it, Trevor, and find it that way. Now, minus coming there to your hometown to stalk you, how would people go about keeping up with you and anything you have going on with Blue Heron Entertainment in the future and now? Thank you for asking that because we have we have Twitter and Instagram at Blue Heron Games. That is Blue Heron Like the Bird and Games, all one word together. And then you can also follow us on Facebook. And we actually also have a Facebook stretch goal that if Affectionate Cats and Cuddles gets over 500 likes, we're going to add a new add-on to the to the Kickstarter, improving some of the some of the some of the components of the base game. Okay, and where do we sit now on current likes? So currently we're at 276 people who like affectionate cats and cuddles. So that's only 275 more people that need to like the page. Well, actually 225 24 people that need to like the page and we are going to be adding a new add-on to the Kickstarter. Well, there you go. So that's a way to help. Even if somebody does their wallets, maybe not big enough, they can go ahead and just jump over the Facebook page and give it a simple like, and that'll help help it out as well. Absolutely. So, yeah, we don't want to keep you all night. We really appreciate you coming on Getting Geeky with Game Relief with us to talk all about affectionate cats and cuddles. It's treat time. Any final parting words from my audience about your game? I just want to say, if you like cats, if you like something sweet, and you want something that the whole family could could enjoy, please back my Kickstarter, and thank you for your support. No problem. Yeah, we really appreciate you coming on Getting Geeky with Game Relief to talk all about it, Trevor. We really appreciate it. Excellent. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, no problem at all. Well, I hope you enjoyed that interview as we sat down with Trevor to talk all about that expansion and his new, that's on Kickstarter. If you liked anything of that, check the link out. Go ahead and back it and share with your friends. Do you want to hear about your game or somebody game you like on Kickstarter? Either an interview or a Kickstarter corner or something like that? Well, make sure you have them or you Go ahead and message us on Facebook at Getting Geeky with Game Relief or Blake Leafty, or they can always send an email at GameRelief at GameRelieveGo.com. We'd love to bring fresh new games to you, the fans. But 
unfortunately, it's our least favorite time, your least favorite time. But good news, we have an awesome, amazing, interesting game. We'll be talking about with the creator from Hong Kong on Wednesday. Ever ate a bug? Well, even if you haven't, you're going to want to stay tuned to Wishless Wednesday this Wednesday as we sit down with the creator of Bugman, an edible party game. Well, anyways, our least favorite time, your least favorite time, time for us to get on with our lives, you to get on with yours. In the meantime, I hope you'll get geeky, stay geeky, and bring others in the geek fold. Game Relief, out. <laughs> Gamer Leaf levels up. Tune in next week to see if Gamer Leaf's luck holds up.